has begun. Assistant! Oh, you have come. Yes, yes, here I am. Isn't everything all right? Where are all the actors? Isn't the play supposed to start now? Yes, all of the devotees have gathered in great anticipation. Oh, yes, I see them now. Hurry on, everybody! Hurry on! What play are we doing tonight? One that goes back in time to the end of Satya Yuga and covers the expanse of the entire universe. It includes demigods and sages, palaces inhabited by millions, and a lake covered in lotus clusters. Oh, I get it now. I understand. I know it's bothering you. This, this stage is too small. We need a bigger stage, maybe some new curtains. Whether the stage is too small or not, will our audience grasp the essential truth being spoken tonight? The rare and wonderful association for Bhagavad, the importance of Guru, the steadfast mind of a devotee, or the absolute invincibility of transcendental sound. Will these concepts travel through time and touch the hearts of our audience? Oh Lord, will I again be able to be the servant of your servants who find shelter to your lotus? Will my mind always think of your tangible actions? Will my body always engage in your body's service? Who is that? Who is that? What beautiful prayer is just now being recited? The play is beginning, but this is the end. Oh Lord, source of all opportunities, I do not wish to enjoy in Druvaloka, the heavenly planets, nor where Lord Brahma resides. I do not want to be the supreme ruler of the earthly or lower planets, nor do I want to be the master of the powers of this yoga, nor do I want liberation if I have to be separated from you. Ah, this, this is the voice of King Indra. He is remembering within his mind the words of the demon Ritrasura and remorsefully lamenting his fate. Remorsefully lamenting his fate? What is his fate? What ever happened to King Indra? And how did he end up in the stem of the lotus flower? One question at a time, for the answers are very complex. King Indra is living within the stem of a lotus flower, situated in the beautiful Manasa Sarovar Lake. He spends his time meditating on the Supreme Lord, remembering his killing of the demon Vrachasura and suffering almost to the point of starvation. How is it possible that a demon could compose such beautiful prayers? King Indra is hiding from personified sin who chased him here and there throughout the universe. He is very ashamed and regretful because he killed a Vaishnava who appeared before him in the dress of the demon Vrachasura. But how could a Vaishnava take birth as a demon? A contradiction to be sure. A Vaishnava who takes birth as a demon and then encourages his enemy to slay him. The answer to your question will take us back to the beginning of our play tonight, where millions of years ago there was a king named Chitraketu. <coughs> this king possessed many opulences, many wives, a populace that loved him dearly, and great personal attributes. But he was morose and constantly distraught for never having begot a son. and lamentation 
great sage is aware of everything, and yet he asked the cause of my anxiety. Let me tell him forthwith. I have no son, but I feel a great need for an heir to my throne. Will you please help me? <coughs> oh look, what's happening now? Did that sage agree to help King Chichikai to get his son? The play continues. Angiramuni is a very powerful sage. He is preparing a fire sacrifice <clears throat> and offering sweet rice. Now, that sweet rice which has been offered is being given to Queen Krita Duti, who will bear King Chichikai's son. So the king, he gets his son. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yay! Oh, so this, this could be the end of the play right now. No, no, not the end. Now listen very carefully to the words of Angira Muni, for King Chichiketu does not. Oh, great king, you will have a son who will be the cause 
of both great jubilation and lamentation. A son! I will have a son! We will have a son! Oh, this is wonderful! Everyone can be so happy now! <coughs> But didn't you hear what Angira Muni said to the king as he was leaving? What? Angira Muni said that this son would be the cause of great happiness and great lamentation. Oh, but everyone knows about happiness and distress. That only means that, you know, maybe his little boy is going to be naughty sometimes because... He's going to be so adorable. He can get away with anything. And his father's going to love him so much. And Oh, he's just going to be so cute. And, you know, it's only in this way that maybe his father would experience just a little bit of anguish, just like a pinch. You just worry too much. Unless you happen to be a jealous co-wife whose heart has been rent asunder by the wielding claws of envy. But everyone, <coughs> in any way, in some course of time, a son will be born, and everyone should be happy. Well, a son is born, but everyone is not happy. I don't care. This just isn't fair. We are the king's wives as well. I am also a queen. Since the birth of that child. Oh friend, but you forget. Not the queen with the son. Whether it is fair or not. What can we do? Our husband hates us. Since the birth of that child. Our husband doesn't even care to glance in our direction anymore. With eyes only for the mother of that child. I can't go on like this. It's unbearable. We'd be better off as... As maidservants! I'm sorry to say, but it's true. The king at least shows no indifference to them. And the queen... She struts around like she owns us anyways. I despise her, hate her. You hate her, but the king, he insults us even more. The baby this, the baby that, it's all I ever hear. Did you know that our beloved husband gave away over 60 million cows on that child's birthday? And when he's not administering to the needs of that queen, he's with the baby in the nursery. I hate him with all my heart. I, I hate the child. The reason we're all suffering this hell. For hate's sake, I'll spit my last breath at him. If only, if only what? Jackal screams through the blackness of the night. <laughs> Life can be so <laughs> nebulous. Temporal, <laughs> to be sure. Perhaps his duration of life could be shortened. A dastardly, deadly deed. A for counting poison. An unassuming nocturnal nightcap. <laughs> Waiting for the mother's absence? And the nurse busy with chores? His sleeping lips parted, just one drop of the black robe of death. Let me covet the child.
succumbed to envy. Save me. 
Well, does everyone understand what's happening now? Oh, yes. I can see the king is submitting himself at the lotus feet of the guru. Yes. We may possess many things. A body, wife, son, fame, wealth, friends. Yet, they are all the same and that one day we will be forced to be separated from them. They are all impermanent, and because they are sometimes seen and sometimes not, they are a constant cause of expectations and disappointments. Therefore, try to understand who we really are why we are under the influence of this lamentation. Jivera Surupahoy, Krishnera Nityadas, Krishnera Tatashta Shakti, Veda Veda Prakash. The living entity's constitutional position is to be an eternal servant of Krishna because he is the marginal potency of the Supreme Lord. By understanding this, we will be able to obtain peace. <clears throat> oh, what is happening now? By his mystic power, Narada Muni will bring his dead child back to life and is about to address us. According to the, my fruit of activities, I, the soul, travel from one body to another. Sometimes I take birth as an animal, sometimes as a plant, and sometimes as a human being or demigod. <coughs> Therefore, in which birth was this king my so-called father? Mm -hmm. oh, this child is surely bewildered. No, he is not bewildered. He is very clear-headed. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I, I'm really sorry. I I know this is a little inappropriate, but so-called parents, I have children, you just left a few minutes ago and now they're your so-called parents? What is this? Because of my past karma, I have been forced to enter many different bodies made of the five gross elements and the three subtle elements. Each time, the mixture of elements is different. So, I appear sometimes as an ant and sometimes as a demigod. <coughs> Just because I entered a body made by this king does not make me his son in any way. My real relationship is with the Supreme <coughs> Personality of Heaven. Well, if that's the case, then why have you caused the king so much pain? Our relationships in this material world are the results of our dealings as we try, try to enjoy the material elements. Who has not experienced that today's friend is tomorrow's enemy. Perhaps in my last life I was the king's enemy and I'm now appearing as his son. Why should he not consider me his former enemy and be jubilant upon my death? Well, help me to understand this if you will. If the king is your enemy, then why does he have so much affection for you? If your enemy's gold falls into your hands, do you not use it for your own purposes? Do you not love it all the more? Gold is gold, but in different situations, it is either your friend or your enemy. So you're saying that the king's affection for you is only as a son? Yes. For example, when an owner is sold, from, when an animal is sold from one owner to another, the sense of ownership is broken. In the same way, I appeared as the king's son for some time. And when I went to another body, the affectionate relationship is broken. It is only the body which is born and lost along with all the connections related to it. Relations connected to it. Well, then what about us, the soul? The soul is equal in quality to the Supreme Lord because like the Lord, it is eternal. The soul is not affected by friends and enemies or happiness and distress. I seem to be affected in that way. Because the soul is very, very small, 
it can be covered by the material energy. But, but in this conditioned state, we do have friends and enemies and are always affected by anger um, and lamentation. In order to become free from all these things, we must depend on the transcendental Supreme Lord. Actually, I'm trying to make a little sense here, and uh, thanks, uh, young man. <laughs> Being astonished by the words of his dead son, King Chichiketu cut the shackles of his material affection and gave up his lamentation. Oh, this has been so exhausting and stressful that finally at last we've come to the end of our play. <coughs> this could be the end, but for the king and for all of us, it is only the beginning. Do you remember the beautiful prayers that we heard earlier? As small calves wait anxiously for the time of milking, as a morose wife yearns for her husband's return. Such longing and desire such love and affection for the Supreme Lord was expressed in these words by this same Chichiketu, who we have just now seen renounce material affection. But I thought we heard those prayers from Vitrashura. So Vitrashura and Chichiketu are one and the same. Then how did our dear king go from renouncing his worldly life to developing such strong and deep sentiments for the Lord within his heart. Your question is very good. Though the hour is late, I will answer in brief. When Angiruni first came to the king, he only gave him a son. It wasn't until after the death of his son that Narada Muni also came and gave instructions regarding Bhakti Yoga. It is only after material attachment and the desire to enjoy the material world has been given up that one can fully understand bhakti yoga. Then, hearing and chanting mantras given by his guru, King Chitraketu journeyed from the dark well of materialistic life to the sweet resting place of the Lord's lotus feet. What you did and told, really I have come to <coughs> these powerful instructions and they are doing in a very good way. So my blessing to the compiler of this story, see, <laughs> oh, my blessing to my Those in household are right, but I want, oh, they should preach my mission in this way, everywhere in this world. And also, my so much blessing to the son of king. Oh, very wonderful. What name? She was. I like him very, I have so much affection for him and that is why I told him to be my most favorite dis uh, disciple that he may message me, massage me, he can cook for me, he can preach for me and, <laughs> and he is very qualified. I want that very soon he should be expert in all these things. <laughs> I so much blessing to Angira and Lord Rishi. So much blessing to oh, the personality Narada and Angira, but who 
are playing the part of Narada Angira, <laughs> my blessing, that they should follow Angira and not actually, and they should be oh develop developing their Krishna consciousness and like that. Oh, the kings, the king, Sitaketu Mara, is still now and not recognize that who is he. <laughs> Yours, oh, <laughs> very wonderful, very wonderful. <laughs> so, all the in the uh, family of Nanda Kumar, Nanda and daughter of Prithu. Prithu are what? Pool. So uh, they played part very well. They kings, and they hated that boy. And they oh, next poison in in milk. Oh, this is the nature of people. But you know, when Narada and Angira came, and he told all this is Dham, and Jiva Tattva, Krishna Tattva, all were in French. Queen and King. Uh, also, uh, I will come. So, but I will, don't disturb me. <laughs> uh, oh, this is the nature. <coughs> Without any reason, they quarrel themselves. They cannot bear <coughs> happiness of another anyone, very jealous of. <laughs> this is nature of this world. But with the king, they also realized this fact and they went to Narada and Angira and fell flat on their lotus feet and requested. Now we have given poison. Now we are given. So, please be merciful to me, like king and king, and give initiation, initiation and mantra to me, that we can be successful in our life. Then Narada and Angira, they became very happy, and with the king, queen, and all the kings, oh, he gave mantra, and all left their houses. We cannot leave this world, but they left and went to the forest and they began to chant that mantra and remember and very quickly Chitraketu Maharaj became one of the very dearest of Krishna, of Sankarsan and became the god brother of Shankar. And now they have told all the history of it. And also, I uh, uh, am blessing uh, who? Bajandranandan. That he arranged some questions. <laughs> Very important questions. Interesting. And that boy, oh, very holy and very <coughs> in good way. He explain everything and he answer all these things. <laughs> so my blessing to all, talk to all that. And to hearers also, audience also, they patiently heard. And I think that this is my mission to come to go to Go Prima! <laughs> I can distribute oh, to you all sweets, but this nectar <laughs> I can. So they are different. Oh, uh, anyone kill them? Anyone? Jai Jai Radha Ramana Hari Bo Jai Jai Radha Ramana Hari Bo Jai Jai Radha Daughters and sons. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
We have only four card men. Where will we find more? I know that! Bring me more! <laughs> Just now coming! Whatever we could, and we offered it to you, and then we performed your worship as obediently as we could. So please be satisfied and bless us. Me. Now, just see, the Brahmana is brought to Silis for you. Tiptoes me, tiptoes me, I am satisfied. <laughs> now I am satisfied. <laughs>
Manushi Ganga. Manushi Ganga. All that, oh my boat is. Oh my boat is so much. So many holes. So many holes. Give up all your parts. Give up all your parts. Ornaments. Ornaments. Even your dresses. Even your dresses. Otherwise, my no boat will be. And you are sakshi. Oh, we witness of that leader. Witness of that leader. Inspire all these leaders. Inspire all these leaders in our hearts. In our hearts. Because Govardhan 400 were was here. Because Govardhan 400 was here. Krishna was begging his mercy. Krishna was begging his mercy. In their guidance, we are. In their guidance, we are. Oh, begging your mercy. Begging your mercy. Oh, Giriraj. Oh, Giriraj. You can fulfill all of your our desires. Fulfill all our desires. Want anything more? I don't want anything more. Sir Radhika. Neglect Krishna black person. So be always merciful to us. Please be always merciful to us.